company who works for VAERS. And then once they gather all that data, they'll give you a permanent VAERS number with, with which you can give to the patient. So they're very, it's a very involved process and they really do try to get the full story. And that permanent number is a validation of your claim. It's been looked at, it's been validated, here's your permanent number. Okay. It's not this wishy-washy system that they're making it out to be. It, it, it's, it should be respected, and we've used it for many years. Why all of a sudden is it considered, you know, was considered fine before, and now all of a sudden it's a wishy-washy system. It's right. kind of crazy. Well, it happens to be the only one it is the only designed one. by mm -hmm. the CDC that runs our entire, you know, health system in America. So if you have a problem with it, you should complain to CDC. And especially since it's the capture system that we are all being forced to use when you made an emergency use authorization and turned our entire population to a test group. You would, I'm amazed. It amazes me that we find ourselves today right now with Joe Biden threatening to fine employers that have no business dealing with medicine or health, mm -hmm. fine employers that don't force this vaccine upon, uh, you know, their employees. Yet, wouldn't it have been smarter not only to have a mandate, but how about a fine on doctors and nurses that don't report? Because we needed we needed such a robust and, and accurate count of what was happening since too many people were getting it to really you know, be able to figure out the numbers, then we need all of that data. Mm -hmm. And yet the opposite seems to be true. So when you went to, you said, I'm going to start using VAERS then, right? I'm going to start doing my due diligence because I am seeing a lot of anomalies. Um, you thought, well, I would imagine just like I would, if I'm in a business and say, hey, do you know we're supposed to do this? Did you start asking doctors and nurses around you if they knew that there was like a legal, like sort of a, an obligation, a law to fill out these VAERS reports? Yes, very much. And I actually went to to my leadership and 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 talked about it and I said you know is anybody aware of this like we need to start doing this yeah and of course because it is such an involved process um, nobody really wants to do it we don't have the time there's no there's no time in your day to do it um, so um, they kind of came back at me and said you know what Deb if, if you want to you know take this on that that's okay go ahead go ahead and start reporting to VAERS and here I'm thinking I'm just taking on a couple of patients here and there. So meaning like I'll give you some of the cases I think are right. like vaccine injury. I don't have time for it, but if you exactly. really Exactly. I kind I'll of volunteered to do this job because I felt just it was a just a tiny side job. Yeah, because it's it's important, right? I, I recognize the importance of it right away. Like we, we need to do this. And so what I did was I put envelopes in our emergency room in our uh, fast track because that's kind of where you're going to see these patients first. And I told the providers, hey, Put, put any patients you think may have something to do with it or you're not sure, just put them in there. I'll review the cases and I'll start reporting. And I did the same thing to many of my colleagues that I work with. Okay. Not all of my colleagues agreed with me because they really didn't want to even believe that these vaccines could even potentially cause any problems. Right. Plus, we didn't even know what problems we were, we're supposed to be looking for. Right. So I, I had a lot of my colleagues not really give me reports, but a lot that did. But like I said, that turned in, this volunteer position turned into a my entire week off. That's all I was doing. Wow. And it's a long process. So when you say long process, I've talked to, there's a lot of doctors that have, have reached out to us. We've talked a lot about bears. They're like, look, because of you or, you know, because of this situation, I'm looking to bears. And, and I've had many of them say the same thing, but you don't understand, like to fill out a bears report, especially the, one of my friends is an ER doctor. Mm -hmm. And he says, in the ER, you're in, you're out, right? Like you never know when you have time. I would sit down to write a bears report. It's really in depth. And at first they wanted a lot of numbers like, well, they're not even my patient. I don't don't know what lot they use. I didn't give them the vaccine, mm -hmm. but I'm having this issue right now and it should be reported. So then I got to go find the lot number and, you know, but all of this and that you start figuring it out. But they said, literally, if you get called, if you, you know, you get called, you know, we need you, you know, out on the floor and you run out, this system doesn't stay where it's at. It erased, it just, once it shuts off, yes. you're logged out and now you got to start all over again, which just seems like for all the computer systems in the world, and by the way, if you're out there, Google or Microsoft or whoever builds this thing, you want to do these doctors a favor and set up a system where they, they can sort of save. Here's a concept. How about you save it as you go along so that you don't have to start over? These people are busy. They're trying to save lives. But that's the problem, right? Correct. And one of the other things that, that happened to me numerous times is you get through the entire report and you, you click submit and then it says authentication failed. And the whole report's gone and you have to start all over again. Oh, so what I was doing was saving some of it in a Word document 
because I knew that potentially could happen. And so I could just cut and paste because it, 